If you want to create more functionality inside of your chatbots, then creating a mini app is a fantastic way to do so. It allows you to create a good solid interface that seems native towards the chatbot platform. And it allows you to connect to external platforms by either API calls and other specific features. To create a new app, press the blue button at the top right corner. And from here, you will be able to choose which kind of mini app that you would like to build. Mini app version one is completely JSON based. And mini app version two, which is currently into beta, is flow based. So just like you are creating your chatbot flows, you will also be able to create mini apps this way. Also, more features are inside of the mini app version two. So if you want to check this out, then you will be able to. For now, let's go with mini app version one. Press give the app a name, press create, and we'll see that the demo overview of your app currently in draft version will be displayed in your mini apps overview. You can either publish or you can edit this app. If we take a look at editing the app itself, you will see that we have different kinds of setups. On the left hand side, we will be able to give more details on what this mini app does, like a title, a description. You can also give the logo and a cover image. And if you have a tutorial on how this app works, you can display the YouTube ID here. On the right hand side, you will be able to edit the app itself. You have different kinds of tabs, as you can see. We have the authentication tab. And if you need sample data, for example, have an API key inside of the header, you can press the sample data at the bottom. This will pre-fill the authentication and you can fill in your specific data. Same goes with triggers. For example, if you want to have sample data for a new product, you can just press the button and fill in all your needed data. For actions, these are basically your API calls, your JSON based API calls. In the sample data, you will be able to, for example, say get product. And you will see on top, you will have the request forms. So we can give this action a name, we can give it a title and a description. In the form section, we will be able to request data from the user. And inside the request section, you will have the actual API call along with the headers, the payloads, and the mapping of specific data points. You can adjust this all to your liking and of course to the API documentation of the platform that you are trying to work with. In the sources section, you will also be able to provide static sources or dynamic sources. Again, you can just press the sample data to get started right away. You also have to tap for API scopes and from here you can select the API scopes you need for this app. And for this, you will also be able to check the API documentation. In the last tab, the API token request, you will be able to set up a similar request as you can see on the screen. Once you're done, you can press save. You can either publish the app or continue working and installing the draft version itself. If you want to create a new app with the mini app version two, it's pretty similar. You give the app a name, you press create. If we go into edit mode, You will now come to a flow builder like environment, like the one you will be building with your chatbot flows. On the left hand side, you will have app fields, which you can pre-build and you have the access to text, number, boolean, date, date time, and JSON fields. You will also have your authentication that you can set up either by API key or you will have OAuth version two. You will have your inputs and your requests as well that you can set up. Under actions, you will be able to set up new actions like with the version one. Same goes for triggers. You also have one time URLs that you can use inside the mini app itself. You have the sources like in version one and you have more settings where you can define all the information about your app.